All right, auspicious day. This is going to be pipe number 100. Will also be the 20th I've made out of this material, uh, Picasso marble from Western Utah, which is just gorgeous. Uh, I've had this block uh, cut and put away for uh, quite a while now. I've got quite a lot of more material I need to cut. Uh, this stuff has just got such beautiful patterns in it. I love it. This is, uh, I've made uh, 20, as I said. I've got still have half of them here. Some of these are just gorgeous. Like, uh, actually, I think uh, this one will probably look similar. It's got uh, this uh, white band all across one side. Uh, so when I curve through it, it uh, could do something very similar to this. Uh, the black on top will uh, might look like that, especially on this end. Yeah, so I'll probably put the bowl over here. Well, let's get to work. Chooching right along. came out just perfect. I use a ball and diamond burr to give the bottom of the bowl more of a funnel shape for better airflow. Here you can see the result. That'll work good. I also used a needle bit to make a little notch here. Makes it a little easier to get a pry tool under the screen if it's really caked with junk. So you can pry up the screen and remove it and clean it without damaging it. I got a diamond cylinder mounted over a diamond grinding wheel powered by the drill press from above with a flexible coupling. And I can press on it real hard. That cuts fast. A lot more work to do. Quick check in before I start the contouring so you can see how the figures are coming out. Look at that on the back, it's a ghostly image. Yeah, that'll be nice. The cylinder cuts pretty fast too and I can uh, lean on it pretty hard. Not going anywhere, not stressing the drill. The machine is sturdy. We walk from here, hand sanding. been sanding a little while already, just a few more deep scratches I need to take out here. Been trying to replace the hand sanding with a machine, but thus far I have not been able to replicate the smooth curves I get when I do it this way. The white layer of that ghostly pattern was starting to flake away and leave rough underneath it, so I just sanded most of it out. It still looks great. Now up to a grid of 400, crossing over from sanding to pre-polishing. I could move to the machine at this point, but I think on this one I'm just going to keep going with the hand sandpaper up to 2000.
I'm using a polishing wheel of my own construction. Leather with padding over a plywood disc with a center hole I bought and chiseled out a hex to embed a nut. I added that spacer to make it room, put a stud on top, and that screws into my arbor. And lets me polish on the top or on the bullnose edge. And I drive it same as I do with the big grinding wheel. I do not use the water recirculation system for final polish. I just uh, spray the water in like this. Does drain to the same place as the research system, but I'm not going to use so much water that I'm going to overflow it. But you need to pay attention to that. Batten down all the hatches. And Side polish here. The fiance got this ultrasonic cleaner for her eyeglasses but it's also effective at removing fine polishing powders from deep cracks in stone. Not really necessary in this case, but a post-polish clean has just become a standard part of my process, so... This marble takes a real nice shine. Lots of interesting figures here. But this is only half of it. Uh, many colors to choose from for the cap. Uh, I've got a feeling I'm just gonna stick with traditional black for this one. Catch up with you. All right, I got everything laid out. I'm gonna preheat my toaster up to about 325. Get my cord all set up. I use this to stretch the end. And that's kind of like a saddle. Uh, when I pull this out of the oven, I got to work really quickly. So while it's heating, I'll explain a little what I'm trying to do. Uh, I lay it over the top and I have to make sure it is properly centered and kind of pinch the end here. And uh, I want to get a good grip on it with my left hand and make sure it's uh, not coming up short on either side, not coming up short on the tail. I need to have it a good solid grip and I uh, make a, a bridge between the pipe and the dowel and I pull down with the cord and what I want to happen is it to stretch like plastic and not uh, crease like paper like I'm showing you here. Uh, so I've got to do that first step of getting it in my left hand securely really fast while the plastic is uh, still stretching. So. Mm. 
There's some creases, but uh, I may just be able to trim all that away because I'm going to trim it about right there. That I can fix with a heat gun. I think I can work with this. Trimming all these caps, I've cut my fingers a lot, like uh, a lot, a lot. Just recently got these uh, cut proof finger cuffs. Uh, cut proof gloves too, but it seem to be working out pretty well. I haven't, uh, if I slip a little bit, no big deal. Because I am like holding this little piece as I bring the knife right by it. Here's some close-ups so you can see how I do the rough trimming before taking out the heat gun to fix the shape. Areas like that I couldn't catch with the first throw, but I got a pretty good uh, fit overall, a pretty good snap. Uh, I will try to uh, mush that down a little bit more with the heat gun without uh, affecting the whole shape. Incidentally, I'd love to replace these plastic caps with leather, but I have a lot to learn about leather work. This is uh, the best results I've had so far. I actually was able to do the stretch on this one, but I'm not sure how weatherproof this would actually be. Uh, this, this one was uh, treated with uh, stearic acid and would be weatherproof, but I just couldn't do the stretch as well. A lot more experiment to, to do there. It was because of that leather experimentation that I got this uh, edge burnisher, but I found it works good on uh, plastic edges too. So you just rub it in. I used to sand these caps and varnish them, uh, just taking too much time on them. So uh, now just tried to get a nice uh, good texture on the outside. I feel if I was to try to put any kind of maker's mark on the pipe itself, it would detract from the aesthetics, so I have never done that. But I do sign the inside of the caps with a date and a number. I uh, engrave it with a little burr and then fill it in with an oil paint sharpie. This one was drilled with an 11 16th bit, which I would classify as a medium, and a standard 3 quarter inch screen fits in perfectly and locks in place. It's not going to uh, wiggle around or fall out on you, as is common with glass pipes. And because of that notch I put in earlier, it's really easy to uh, pry it up. And then you can just uh, hold a dirty screen over a flame and flick away the ashes when it's cool. So if you're not going to pass it to someone else, you can put the cap on to extinguish it immediately, and it could be back in your pocket before you even exhale. And it just takes a little bit of practice to learn to manipulate the cap one-handed. Here are the most similar ones, number 39, number 85, and number 100. And here's number one for good measure, going all the way back to 1995. We'll see if the second hundred takes as long. Thanks for watching.